There was a time on her when in the book of heaven an old account was written. No, 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 no.
me cause us to serve the Lord today. It says, let me lose myself and find the Lord in thee. Praise God. It says, though it cost me grief and pain, are you willing to pay the price this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we just come and just lift our hands? Praise God. It's not my own mind, nor my own but it's by the Spirit. Praise God. And we can make it each day. To God be the glory. And this time I'm going to ask for a pastor to come and ask for Praise God in respect and introduce our speaker for today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a great day to be alive and to be in the house of the Lord. It's a great day to be alive and to be in the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. You can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. It comes time for the words of God. Sister Samantha Francis is no stranger to us. Um, her work takes her to India, to Haiti, regions that some of us are not dare to go. Um, before she comes, I know, I know it, it, it probably doesn't mean much to us when she puts the slides and shows some of the remote places in India. Some of us will never really get to go there. Some of us will not want to go there. But that's where the Lord has been taking her. One of the ways we can just help her out is to give an offer. Well, region she go very antichrist, very irreligious. You know, they just pray for our protection. Amen. Stretch your hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I serve and stand before you to minister words of eternal life. And Lord, also we commend her to your care as she goes into these regions. Lord God, to take the gospel to those who have not heard about you. Lord God, Lord God, Lord God. You will always have a man or a woman to do the job that some of us will not dare to do. Take over, go with her, cover her. We pray for her personally that you provide and help me for her, Lord. Lord, a husband with the same heart, heart for ministry, Lord God. Take over. We look to you. Cover her as she speaks today. Use her to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give God the glory in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father God, for your mercy, for your goodness toward the sons of men, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for preserving us and being with us, God. Lord, through dark times and through, God, times of light. And we bless you, God, for providing for us, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for watching over us, God, when we were unworthy. And we give you all praise and all glory and all honor this morning. God, we thank you, God, for your mercy, God that we are undeserving of, God. And we thank you, God, for seeing us through all the way, God, into your kingdom, through those gates, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your generosity, Pastor Aaron. I want to thank the Lord for taking me and bringing me back. Um, since I've been with you, I, God has taken me to minister in Haiti and Jamaica and back in India. I was just in Jamaica and Haiti. Um, in November and December, and I know some of you prayed for me. Thank you so much. Can we hold the music, please? Thank you. I just want to um, give honor to Pastor Aaron's and Sister Aaron's who treat me so well, whether I'm here or absent. And I want to bless all my friends that are in this church, Sister Nadine, Sister Eileen, she's my... You know, God says that he's going to give you multiple, a hundredfold mothers. And he has. I want to thank Sister Eileen. She made this top for me that you guys are looking at right here. Look at that skill. And she's like a mother to me. I love her so much. I know she doesn't like attention, but I have to give honor where honor is due. Amen? She takes good care of me. She's good to me. Sister Nadine, who prays for me. Sister Noble. Sister Aaron's all my good friends in this church. I am so honored to have you in my life. May God bless you a hundredfold for all your goodness to me. Amen? Well, you can have a seat. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the ministry. I don't have any slides, but I did bring some, um, some little pamphlets for you, and it tells you about our ministry. Um, we have an orphanage and an outreach ministry to tribal people in India, in South India, and um, they are people, 
The majority of them don't know how to read. They don't know much. Some of them live under trees. And um, we bring some of these kids down and we take care of them. We're training them to be an army for the Lord. We have 30 of them right now. We're building a building for them and uh, we've, we've laid the foundation. We're open to, to finish it this year. If you'd like to find out more, we have a website. We're a nonprofit, 5013C. And uh, all your gifts will be tax deductible. So you can see me after service and you can grab one of these to find out more about our ministry. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the word of the Lord. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. If you'd stand for one moment, it's a short verse. Say amen when you're there. All right, let's read it together. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Be ye followers of me, even as I am also followers of Christ. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint your word today and that you would speak as you desire to your children. And our hearts be open to receive your will. In Jesus' name, have a seat. My topic today is, what is important to God? What, you know, I'm a, a teacher more than a preacher. Well, yeah, I preach when necessary, but I love to teach. I would love to give you some meat so you can hold on to and ponder it and meditate on it day and night and change your life, amen? So what is important to God? A lot of times when we're in church, we do things that they're okay, they make things go, but they're not that important to God, amen? When we get to heaven, the things that God is gonna give us rewards for are what's important to him. Yeah. Amen? Sometimes we make things that are big, small, and things that are big, small, big. Yeah. We have to be in alignment with God to get what God wants done for his kingdom. Yeah. So I have three things that I want you to ponder today that talks about what's important to God. And we're going to look at the life of Jesus Christ in order to see that. He's our example, right? right. Yes. He's the author and finisher of our faith. We're to imitate him. That verse that says, follow me as I follow Christ, Paul is writing that. And he lived a life that was very Christ-like. Would you agree? Yes. Amen. Amen? Yes. And he said, follow me as I follow Christ. I want you to think, as we're going through this service today, can you say that about yourself? Can you say that about yourself? I want you to think about that as I go through this sermon today. In another version, in the New American Standard, it says, Be imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. Or imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Imitate, copy. When you put something on a, on a copy machine, it comes out with the same words, and the same lines, and the same verses, and the same color, right? So, Christ is the prototype for all the church to follow. Amen? So, if we are... Put in the, the piece of paper, or we put in Christ in our life to copy. There should not be not much differentiation. Amen? Whoa, 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 whoa. Can you say that about your life? Yeah. What are you focused on? So three areas that we can focus on in Jesus' life to demonstrate what we should be doing. Because he did it perfectly. Amen? Number one, total obedience and submission to God. Total obedience and submission to God. Number two, the advancement of the kingdom of God. We marched around this place, said forward, still is Jehovah. Yeah, it's true. Are we living it? It's true. The advancement of his kingdom is he in God's mind. Amen? And number three, of course, the souls of men, which is the reason he came to the earth. So let's look first at Total obedience. So how can we know that we are imitating Christ's behavior on earth to demonstrate the will of God in the earth? Let's examine. When I was in India, there was, they, you know, in India they celebrate, they worship 330 million gods and goddesses and animals and everything. Everything that moves, they worship it. They make up gods to worship. And so we were riding in one of the cities and the minister I was working with points out this guy behind me on a moped. And the guy on the moped had his fingernails long, his eyelash done. He looked very effeminate. And I said, is he gay? He said, no. He's dressing like that to identify with the goddess that he worships. 
Are we looking like our God? That man put on makeup, fingernails, everything just to look like the goddess he was worshiping. What are we putting on of Christ to make us look like him? Amen? His character, not necessarily physical attributes, character. Inside is going to reflect outside. When we have Christ be manifested inside of us more and more, it's going to be reflected more and more outside to the world. Amen? So let's look at Christ's complete and total submission. John 8, 28 to 30. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. The problem is a lot of us are doing things that are of ourselves. Of ourselves, on our own will, in our own will, and get disastrous results. Amen. And one of my favorite verse, verse 29. And he, and he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Oh, I love that. I do always those things that please him. Those are convicting words. Man, to have a life like that, you really have to be straight. I mean, aligned with God. If we're always seeking to please God, there's not a lot of room for mistakes as far as sin is concerned. Because our aim, we may not get it right, but you'll get a lot more right than wrong. Because your aim is right. Your aim is right. You know, the word law, the Old Testament word that we say law, it's Torah. And it actually means to hit the mark, an aim, precision. So if your aim is precise, you may get a little off because we're still not perfected yet. But you'll get it a lot closer than if you weren't aiming at all. Amen? If I have an arrow in my hand and I am aiming at that clock, it's likely I'm going to get closer to that clock than if I just have the arrow and just shoot it. It can land anywhere. Kill somebody in the audience. But if I am aiming, it will likely hit closer than if I wasn't aiming. Amen? So what are you aiming at? What are you focused on? Amen? Total obedience and submission. God doesn't want anything less. He doesn't. We may give it to him, but he doesn't want that. He wants total. The devil will take half because if he gets half, he got you. God doesn't want that. He wants total. You know, somebody was saying to me that there's so much problems with young people staying in church and, and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? One of the problems is our thinking is like when I was lost, I used to think this way. I wanted to be a judge, and you know, I was in college, and, and I figured I'd just get God, and he'll just be in one little section of my life, and I'll have my career in one little section, and my family. Uh-uh. When God comes, you come from one life to the next life. Total transformation. A lot of us want to hang on and drag the old life on with a, it's not going to work, man. Whatever I am outside of God's will trying to do something, I'm miserable. I'd rather be all the way in than halfway in. It's miserable. Be all the way in for God or be all the way in for the devil. Have fun either way. But you know which one's going to pay what? Amen. Amen. John 5.30, Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. You know, the problem with us is that when our will clashes with God's will, God has a hard time convincing us that his will is better than ours. It's, I mean, I'm telling you, when I get focused on wanting something, it's like idolatry. I have to repent of idolatry because I want to convince God that really what I want, God, is better than what you say Whoa. you want to give me. Whoa. And anytime you're in disobedience, that's what you're doing. You're saying that your will is better than God's will. That's what you, anytime you disobey God, that's what you're telling God. You know better than him. And the results will be better than the results he can give you. That's what you're saying to him. That really is. Let me tell you a story about a man that wanted his will and God tried to fight him out of it to have his will. Balaam. You guys know the story of Balaam in Numbers? Yeah. Numbers chapter 22. Balaam was a prophet. He heard from God. You know, God would talk to him. So Balak was a king of Moab and he 
wanted to curse the Jews that came out of Egypt. And so he sent for Balaam. And uh, how many of you know cursing is really real? Curses are real. God has convicted me recently. Just start blessing people. I would bless them. And the kids that I work with in the school, I bless them because so many curses have been on this generation. Curses everywhere. I just want to, you know what, I'm going to stop right now. I bless every single one of you in the name of Jesus to prosper and become everything God has created you to be. And may you be in total submission to him and receive all the blessings that he wants to give to you in the name of Jesus. I bless you now and forever. May you come into full abundance in Jesus' name. Name. Amen. 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 I want to be a blesser. Jesus came to bless humanity. He said, Abraham, you're going to be a blessing to the earth. I want to be a blessing to every human being on earth. I want to do that. That's my aim. If I get 99.9, it's better than not aiming at all. Amen. Aim big. Aim big. Aim according to God's desire for you, not your own. We think like this. God thinks like the whole universe size. Whoa. Amen? Whoa. So Balaam, he, you know, he had a gift, but he prostituted his gift of prophecy. A lot of people doing that these days, yes. especially yeah. in the Western world, Whoa. prostituting their gifts. And God doesn't take the gift away. So Balaam said, come curse these people, because I know whoever you curse is really going to be cursed, because he had power. He talked to God, you know. But God didn't want him to go. Of course not, because that's God's kids. He's not going to come curse my kids. So he's aiming, and God said, don't go. Uh, you know, he said, if these men come to you, he's like, oh, they came, and blah, blah, blah. But he kept going back to God, irritating God, because he really wanted to go, because he wanted money. Yes. Because Balak had said, yeah, I'm going to give you fame and fortune, and uh, you're going to be rich, so just come curse these people. And God was so upset that an angel was going to kill him, and a dumb donkey stopped the angel from killing him. So God let him go. God will let you have your will, then you'll see the outcome eventually. God lets us have our will, and then we see the fruit of our will. Amen. So he went, and he blessed them. Balaam's words are still recited every Sabbath in every synagogue around the world. Yeah. Oh, lovely are your dwelling place. Whoa. How lovely are your tents, oh Jacob, your tabernacles, oh Israel. Those still are recited, but Balaam didn't make it because he was corrupted. He got his will. So he went, and he couldn't curse them, so Balak told him, go home. Because I told you to curse them and you keep blessing them. So went home. But he came back. I guess he thought God's back was turned. Revelation and Peter tell us that he came back and he taught them how to corrupt the Israelites by getting them to curse themselves. You know, I can bless you, but you can curse yourself. And so he couldn't curse them. God blocked him from cursing them. But he taught them how to curse themselves. He taught them how to curse themselves. Whoa. And so, after that, when the Israelites came out, Joshua and the children of Israel, they were killing all the, the nations on the plain, and Balaam was among them. His body was laid out there. Yes, yes. He got his will. Whoa. What good did that money do him then? Nothing. He was dead. Whoa. That's what happens to us when we get our will over God's will. The end of sin is yes. death. He got his money, so yeah, you're a billionaire, one of the guys, they have all these babas in India, and one of the babas, when he died, he had a truckload of gold, billions, so many people gave to him, they give a lot, the pagans give a lot more to their demonic kingdom than the kid, kids of God, I'm telling you, those people give, these babas, they worship them, these babas, they're just men, and they say they're gods, and so people worship them, 300 people, I think it was 300 people, or 30 people died protesting one of these guys, who they had put in jail for raping 300 women. They died protesting this man, that this man was imprisoned for that. How zealous are you for your God? How zealous are you for your God? So this man got his will, and he got the end of his desire, death. The devil tricks us into thinking, if we disobey God, it's gonna be okay. Adam and Eve fell for it down. All humanity has been fallen forever since. You want the temporary quick pleasures, not realizing disaster waits at the end for us. And so Jesus is our example. Submit to God. Submit to God. It's not going to destroy. It may be painful for a little while, 
He said the light momentary affliction is not to be compared with the weight of glory that shall be revealed in us. So you're going to feel it. You're going to feel some pain when you obey God sometimes on earth. But the end of it is pleasure forevermore. We forget the devil blinds us. He makes us think this pain is going to last forever. That's why people kill themselves. He makes you think that pain is going to last. It's not true. Whatever pain you're going through, it's not going to last forever. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Amen? It's not going to last forever. That's a trick from hell. Don't fall for him. Don't fall for that lie. Believe God. I've been in pain sometimes and I just wanted to get out of it. But I trust God that the end, if I follow him, I'm telling you, God has asked me to do stuff and I cried, but I obeyed him. I threw myself across the bed when he told me something one time. I did not want to do it. But I am more terrified of disobeying God than I am of obeying God. I am terrified of disobeying God because he's not going to have your back when you disobey him. You're going to suffer on your own. We're suffering because... You know, Sarah and Abraham decide they want to take things into their own hand. The world is suffering for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The world is suffering. We don't see the repercussions of our choices now trying to solve our little problem. They wanted to solve that problem. Oh, I have a baby. 3,500 years later, humanity. Every time you go to the airport, you have to take off your shoes. Abraham and Sarah did that. Yeah. Because they wanted to get rid of that temporary pain. God did not change his mind. Just because they decide to get in the flesh. We think God's going to change his mind just because we decide to get in the flesh and do our own will. They were 10 years in. God added another 15 years to it. They might have gotten it earlier if they'd waited it out a little bit more. 15 years. He doubled it in plus. God is not going to change his will just because you moan and groan because you're impatient. He's not. I noticed that. I'm like, you know, I cried to him. I'm like, I noticed you didn't change your will for Abraham. I guess you're not going to change it for me either. (laughs) His character doesn't change, children of God. It stays the same. We have to change and come into alignment with him. Amen? His character is not going to change. What would you do with a God that changes? How reliable would that God be? I was listening to this, this preacher on YouTube and he was telling a story, this man, young man wanted to marry this young girl that was in India. And um, God said, no, 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 no. And he's like, will you please and convince, please pray and convince God to let me marry her. You know, they're in this infatuation phase, blah, blah. He said, um, God said, no. He said, if you marry this girl in six months, you'll be miserable. He's like, well, I'm going to pray. And he went and prayed and fasted. He prayed and fasted. And he said, I changed God's mind. And God said, it's okay now for me to marry her. He married her six months in, disaster. He said, I should have listened to you. Yeah, you should have. But now you got to live with those consequences. We think that our will is going to be better than God's. That's humanity. That's That's our downfall. Adam and Eve thought that their desire, their will, was going to do better for them than God could. And here we are. All these billions of people going to hell because they disobeyed God. You don't know what your generations will have to face because you make a bad decision now. Don't think of yourself. Think of your children, your grandchildren. He said four generations of curses of those who hate him. I'm telling you, we're suffering because of our parents and grandparents trusting some of us. I am suffering because of ancestry. We all do. We're all suffering because of Adam. What's your choice today? You're going to choose your will or you're going to choose God's? Hmm. I said you'd have to think about this sermon because we do have to examine ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. It's dangerous to just float through life with God just hanging on the outside instead of letting him be transforming us on the inside. Hallelujah. Hmm. I love to speak and preach to make people think of eternal things, not these temporal things. All that you see is going to fade away. Whoa, Lord. Whoa, Lord. All that you don't see is coming into being. Whoa. Whoa. So which one should you be focused on? He said, set your eyes on things. The unseen. The unseen. That's reality. This is not reality. This is just going to be, this is just like the mock-up to get us to that reality. To see who's going to make it out of this realm 
to live in that realm forever. Whoa. Amen? Amen? This is like boot camp or like, the, or what they call it, um, probation. Yeah. 80 years, that's it, compared to forever? Man, live for Jesus. Live good. Whoa. Live hard. This is short. I can't, I'll, well, God did say he's going to extend my life, so I'll say I'm a third way through. I'm 42. <laughs> I'll say I'm a third way through, not halfway through. Live hard for God. Whoa. Don't live light. When you were in the world, did you live hard for the devil? Live hard for God. Whoa. Hard. Pursue it. Chase him. Whoa. When Jacob was wrestling with him, he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Whoa. Whoa. Don't you want to wrestle with God until he does something in you? He transformed him and made him a prince of God. Israel means prince of God because he wrestled with God and overcame what do you want when you stand before God? Him to say, you barely scratched to come in? Oh, well done. Come sit on the throne next to me. My God, it's so selfish. Some people just want to live to just make it into heaven, escape hell. I tell you, if that's your aim, you may miss it. You may miss it. Because you're not aiming high. Human beings tend to settle at the lowest level. I have a friend. And I love her. She's been saved maybe 30 years. She's been saved longer than me, and she, she kind of considers me um, like her mentor. So lately, <clears throat> and when I was having hard times, uh, she would pray for me and stuff like that, and, and she is just kind of clinging like, to the world too much. It's like the world really hasn't gotten out of her spirit in 30 years. And we were praying and everything, and I love her, she's from Jamaica. And I'm like, you know what? You have to really be into this thing. Yeah. When you're over 50 and you're still wrestling whether you want to be, come on. Don't wrestle with the world, man. You have to value the kingdom of God. Value the kingdom of God. My second point is this, the advancement of the kingdom. The adva if your focus is right, you have little time to do wrong. The advancement of the kingdom. The first thing that Jesus preached coming out of the wilderness after 40, fasting 40 days was repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. The advancement of the kingdom of God. When we get in our little niches and our little cliques and we start, you know, oh, that broke my heart when he said, oh, people can compete over praise and worship. That's the last thing you should be competing over because that means you're in the flesh. That means you're in the flesh. You're not bringing glory to God and you're not going to get any reward in heaven. You're not. Because you're in the flesh, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Right. That broke my heart. Jesus. That broke my heart when you said that. It's not, it's not right for us to clamor over things of God. What are we doing for? What's our motive? If you're not doing it with a pure motive, you're likely not going to get rewarded. Aren't you doing it for an eternal reward? Aren't you doing it for an eternal Aren't you doing it for God? Who are you doing it for? Whose kingdom are you trying to build? A lot of these churches are false because they're trying to build their own kingdom. Their own kingdom. Your every kingdom shall be submitted to the kingdom that's coming. Every kingdom. And so if something has captivated your heart other than God's kingdom, you're in the wrong kingdom and that kingdom's going to fall. The advancement of the kingdom of God. Verse 14 of Mark 1 says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The kingdom, if God said that his kingdom was at hand 2,000 years ago, how much more now? How much more now? What should we be doing in our own ways, in our own lives to advance God's kingdom? Not our kingdom, God's kingdom. Where I minister in India, <laughs> We are like, I mean, I'm in a village and then we're, I'm planning to go up to the jungles like three days or two days over like four mountains to get to it. Those people can't read. They don't know their right hand from their left. Ninety percent of them are liquor heads. I mean, but that's where God wants the kingdom of God to go. Whoa. To reach to those who are helpless in themselves. Whoa. But while I'm here in America, I like to pass out tracks. Uh, if I go a day without passing out a track or evangelizing someone, I feel I have not done God justice. So I pass out these tracks, and it says, have you been invested in the kingdom? In the kingdom of God. I want to see humanity 
know who this God is that we proclaim. Whoa. He's their God. What are you doing to advance the kingdom? Whoa. Advance. People don't see me when I'm passing. I'm not on a stage. I do it because I love humanity, because God loves humanity. Yes. Amen. Do you do it because you love people? Do you do what you do because you love God? God's checking motives more than he's checking outcome. When the little little widow put that might in there, Jesus was the only one who knew that she had everything. She she couldn't live on she had that's all she had to live on. He knew. Nobody else knew, but he knew. When those Pharisees or those rich people are heaping in it, he knew that was maybe two percent of their billions. He's looking at your motives. That's what he's gonna re he reward you for, and that was he's gonna condemn you for. Whoa. Reality. You know what reality is? Stand before the beamer. That's reality. Stand before him and he's giving judgment. This is God. This is reality for all humanity. Whoa. We're going to stand before God and give an account. Right. Look toward that day. Aim for that day. Whoa. Because everything we do until then is Whoa. going to that day. Whoa. You know when we look at souls, we look at people on the street. When I look at them, I don't just see people blah 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 unless I'm tired and in the flesh. Whoa. It's a soul. Whoa. Everyone that you pass, think Whoa. of this, will stand before God. Whoa. Can you help them to stand and hear the words, well done? Whoa. Every soul that you see will stand before him and give an account. Whoa. And so will you and I. Whoa. This sermon that I'm preaching, you're going to give an account for it. I'm going to give an account for it Whoa. because you're hearing. Whoa. Jesus was so serious about the kingdom. And it's the priority in God's mind that if people came to him and said, oh, let me first go do this. He said, you're not worthy. Whoa. You're not worthy of my kingdom. Whoa. He told them to him straight. He wasn't all nice and, well, okay, I'll let you know. No, the kingdom comes first. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. That's what humanity needs. They need the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 9, verse 59 to 62. And he said unto another fellow, another fellow, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. His father's burial was more important than the kingdom of God. <laughs> Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. That's a harsh response. But go and preach the kingdom of God. Let the spiritually dead bury the natural dead. Go preach my kingdom. They're gone. Their chance is over. Go preach my kingdom to those who still have a chance. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home in my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Do you qualify? What's your priority? He said, if you put something before my kingdom, you're disqualified. That's right. Whoa. Your name is off the list, baby. Whoa. Move on. Whoa. You come to my kingdom, you must understand how important it is. We take God's kingdom for granted in this, in this country, Whoa. in the West. I tell people whenever I preach that there are countries that, there are about 50 countries, 52, that Christianity is illegal. illegal. You cannot have worship subjects. You see this that you have? You don't know how accountable you are to God. When there are people getting their heads cut off just for naming Jesus, Whoa. people can't even clap their hands together. They have to clap with air claps. They have churches underneath the earth. They cut out holes and have service under the earth so nobody can find them. That's reality on this planet. Whoa. Whoa. What, that's reality on this. So you come from Jamaica, the most Christianized nation on earth. You come to America that sends out evangelists. How accountable are we? I've heard that there are countries where a pastor has won, uh, uh, a man has one leaf of Bible and he becomes a pastor. We have, what, hundreds and thousands of books, Bibles, all this. And we just sit on it and we make complaints and we do our own thing and we build our own kingdom and we do stupidness. All the time, God wants to help us to be a difference maker in this planet. I pray that you're convicted today. The thing that Jesus did, we think that he did miracles. He did miracles because of compassion. But the miracles were just a taste of the kingdom. Whoa, whoa. He said that he came out 
And he was in cities and villages and synagogues. And he was talking about the gospel of the kingdom. And then the power of God was manifested through the miracles. But why was he doing the miracles? He loved them and he wanted to heal them and he doesn't want humanity to hurt. But that is a taste, a sample of the kingdom. So if somebody has a totally broken body, broken leg, broken heart, broken mind, and he heals it, it's to give an advertisement for his kingdom. Because when his kingdom is fully manifested, there's none of that. There's no mental illness. There's no physical illness. There's no spiritual illness. It is a whole. You are whole in the kingdom of God. Okay? So the point of the supernatural is not so we can show up. A lot of people just prostitute the supernatural. They have a gift and they, oh, everybody look, I'm going to heal this. And they, oh, shake it. The point of miracles is to advertise God's kingdom. Not your kingdom. So many people are advertising their kingdom. It's God's kingdom. It's God's kingdom. He does that to show you what the future will look like permanently if you do it his way. You want to be a part of his kingdom? Only good things, but it has to be a priority for you. We come into this and we want God's kingdom to be here and our kingdom to be there and our husband's kingdom to be here. And yeah, and we have rival kingdoms. That's the problem. We're rivaling God for his kingdom versus our kingdom. In our hearts, we rival God within our own hearts. Is his kingdom ruling in our hearts or is our kingdom ruling in our hearts? We rival God. We are setting up armies to fight against God. Let me tell you, that's a losing battle, baby. That's a losing battle. And my last point I'm bringing down, it dovetails right into it. The lost souls of men. The lost souls of men. Jesus said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's one of the priorities of him coming to the earth. It's for souls. He gave his life a ransom for us. Amen? Jesus demonstrated the value of every single soul when he told the parable of the lost sheep where 99 would be left. So, you know, with us, we'll calculate and we say, well, we are 99. I can't be bothered with beating my hoof against, you know, this desert floor to go find one. 99 is good, but not God. God don't think like us. I might have been like that. I might have said 99 is good. It's close enough. Jesus doesn't think like that. He left them to go find the one. When God sees humanity, he sees a bunch of people, but he also sees every single one. One. Amen. One. He sees one. So if you're going to win somebody, if you just win one person your whole life, you did a good job because God sees that one. Hallelujah. He sees the one. Consider that one could be you. What if it's your soul? What if it was your soul that Jesus said, hey, you know what, I got 99 and you're burning in hell forever. Think of that. We overlook people. We go our way in the store and we just get, man, I'm telling you, I'm in the store, I'm passing out track. I've been kicked out of places. I've been told, but I don't care. I'm about the kingdom. Those souls are more important to me than an insult. I don't care. That soul is more important to me than you telling me get out of your place or whatever. That's right. You know, I go to country, they're making it very um, hard for Christians in India right now. They actually came against, uh, they kicked out uh, one Christian ministry that was pouring in $45 million a year to help kids because they know that the aim of that ministry was to convert those kids and they didn't want it. They want those kids to worship all those demons that they've got. And so they came across all of India and put out Eden. We, all the orphanages had to re-register. When we were there, the villagers came out and attacked us, you know, attacked our um, thing and tore part of our, our construction site. We had to pay to it, but I, pay, I prayed, and God used them to help rebuild it. That's our God. That demonstrates the power of our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bible says, when your ways please the Lord, he makes even as your enemies to be at peace with you. And so here we are, all concerned about our lives, ourselves, our kingdom, our this, our that, and humanity is perishing. Do you know what percentage of people have not even heard the gospel? Get the gospel. Heard Jesus' name. One time. You, talk, you have so much privilege, you can hear about baptism in Jesus' name. 
That two billion people never even heard that a Jesus said exists. Two billion, two billion. If you said each of those people's names, it would take 200 plus years to say their names continue one after the other. 200 years. But every one of those souls matter to God. That's why I do what I do. Somebody said to me recently, it's a sacrifice. I said, it's a sacrifice of me. I love it. I love it. I gave up a six-figure salary to do this, and I don't care. Because somebody else said to me, you're in the most lucrative business of all. Evangelism. The souls of men. Whoa. What value would you put on one soul? Whoa. Whoa. What value would you put on your, your soul? soul? Yeah. What value? Whoa. What value did Jesus put on souls? He gave his life. Whoa. He gave his life. Oh Lord. 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 We rejoice when people get the Holy Ghost. Heaven rejoices if they just repent. It's hard to get souls saved, but it's worth every effort. It's worth every effort. Souls are so important. Jesus went out of his way just to meet the Samaritan woman. I mean, men didn't really even talk to women in public then. He broke all social norms. That's why they couldn't stand him. He don't care about your little gender, your social norm. He cares about the souls of men. You know, people may come in here from different cultures. You might want to run them out, but get, God cares about that soul. That's right. Put your agenda, put your culture, put all that aside oh. and care about the soul. Oh. Yes. You want to stay in your comfort zone while souls are going to hell? That's right. My God, we are accountable for that. Oh. We're accountable for that. Oh. Let me tell you, we can have whatever mindset we want on earth, but when you stand before him, you're going to tremble that you disobeyed him. You're going to tremble. Whoa. 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 You don't know the power you're messing with with God. We can have our carnal minds out as much as we want. But when he shows up, you will tremble. You will tremble. He's not to be toyed with. Have whatever mindset, whatever attitude, whatever thinking process you want. If they contradict the Bible, you're in dangerous territory. Because you're headed to destruction. We have to have a mind that is like Christ. Anything else is demonic. The wisdom from above is from God. The wisdom of the earth is demonic. That's what the Bible says. It's devilish. It's corrupted. That is not God's will for his children. Look at you all here. All of you. Salvation is available to all of you. All of you. There is not one person that God wills to be in hell. Not one. Not even Hitler. Whoa. I'm sure God would have wanted Hitler to repent instead of committing suicide. That's how much he loves humanity. Whoa. He loves us. Don't take that for granted. He is a God to be feared. You know, people who act crazy and carnal that know, say they know God, you don't know God. Because if you know him, you would fear him. You would fear him. He's not to be played with. I treat people that I don't have to necessarily treat well, blah, 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 but I fear God. And I treat people well because I fear him. Because I know that hammer will come down on me so hard. If you don't have that fear of God, you're unhealthy spiritually. You must fear God to be a healthy Christian. You must. You must. You must care about souls to be a healthy Christian. If you're not caring about souls, you're not a healthy Christian. If you're not fearing God, you're not a healthy Christian. If you're more concerned about your kingdom than God, you're not a healthy Christian. You're unhealthy. You're on a bad diet. You need the whole counsel of the word of God. You're on an unhealthy diet, I'm telling you. Everything in here is relevant to you. He said they were given as an example. Everything in here is relevant to you. I pray the fear of the Lord falls on us and that our attitudes and mindset be changed because of that fear. It doesn't matter if you don't think it's going to happen. If God said it, it will. You play with him, you'll see his power. Ananias and Sapphira saw it. It wasn't pretty. I pray the fear of the Lord falls on his children. Let the fear of the Lord captivate your heart. He said, you fall on this rock and be broken or else the rock will fall on you and you'll be crushed. Crushed. If you judge yourself, you won't come into judgment. God wants us to judge us. He don't want to beat us up. He wants us to correct our own behavior so he gives us a little slap and put us back in line. Rather than we going, 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 and he crushes us like a cockroach. He doesn't want that. 
Ananias and Sapphira, they were given a choice. Did you? Did you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you're dead. Next one coming. Did you? Did you? Yes. You're dead. He doesn't put, that's the God of the New Testament. Uzzah reached out and touched you up here. God of the Old Testament, dead. God of the New Testament, same thing. You know, we as apostolics, we say we believe in one God, but we act like it's two different gods. It's the same God. Old and new, it's the same God. It's the same God. His mercy is available, but his judgment is also available. He's just and merciful. You choose which one you want to have. It's the same one. And I don't even know why I went there in the sermon. Because I'm not in my notes. Huh? But I have to obey the Lord. Maybe somebody needed that. So in conclusion, we should focus. The theme of this ministry is what? Focus on Jesus. So we should focus on Jesus. Not only that. We should focus on the things that are important to God. The things that Jesus was focused on. On. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says that those whom he did for you, he also did predestinate to be what? Conformed to the image of Jesus. You can, oh, I adore you, Jesus, but you're not conforming to his image. If you stare at something, what you look at, you eventually become alike. Yeah. That's why these kids imitate their, their rock stars and they imitate the movie stars and they imitate because they're constantly viewing. Yeah. So if we're constantly Whoa. viewing Jesus Whoa. and imitating his behavior, we should become more like him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I can tell the fruit of your life where your focus is yeah. by what you are doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking, how you're acting. I can tell the fruit of your life you're the focus of your life by where the fruit is coming from. Amen. 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 And so I just want to admonish you and encourage you at the same time. Do the things that God has said to do in his word. Not our own will. His will be done. Amen. And so when Paul said, follow me as I also follow Christ. Let that one day be able to be said of you and of me. Amen. I'm going to call Pastor to the altar. Amen. Uh -oh.